3.2 million years ago, a small-bodied primate walked upright across what is now Ethiopia. She stood just over one meter tall. Her brain volume was about 400 cubic centimeters, roughly one-third the size of yours. And yet, that walk changed the future of life on Earth. In 1974, paleoanthropologists Donald Johansson and Tom Gray discovered her fossil in the Afar region. Later that night, while celebrating the find, a song kept playing in the background. So they named her Lucy, not because she knew who she was, but because we needed a marker in deep time. Lucy belonged to a species called Australopithecus afarensis. She lived more than three million years before the first Homo sapiens. And here's what made her scientifically revolutionary. Lucy walked upright. Her pelvis, femur angle, knee joint, and spine curvature all show clear evidence of bipedal locomotion. Before Lucy, many scientists believed that large brains evolved first and upright walking followed later. Lucy proved that idea wrong. Her brain was small, but her body was already changing which tells us something fundamental about evolution. Cognition did not create posture. Posture created the conditions for cognition. Walking upright freed the hands. Free hands enabled tool manipulation. Tool use altered behavior. Behavior drove natural selection on the brain. Over millions of years, brain size increased. Australopithecines approximately 400 cubic centimeters, early Homo approximately 600 to 700 cubic centimeters, and modern humans approximately 1,350 cubic centimeters. That increase didn't happen overnight. It took millions of years of environmental pressure, trial, and failure. Now, an important clarification, Lucy is not proven to be your direct ancestor. Evolution is not a straight line, it's a branching process. At Lucy's time, multiple hominin species existed simultaneously. Some walked upright, some didn't. Most went extinct. One lineage continued. That lineage led to us. Which brings us to a critical question. Is Homo sapiens the end point of evolution? From a scientific standpoint, the answer is simple, no. Evolution has no goal, no final species, no preferred outcome. It is a response mechanism driven by mutation, selection, and environment. And today, environmental pressure is changing faster than at almost any time in human history. Climate change is altering ecosystems. Technology is reshaping survival strategies. Medicine is modifying natural selection. Genetic engineering is introducing artificial selection. These forces don't pause evolution. They change its direction. If Homo sapiens survives for another million years, it will not remain biologically identical. New traits will emerge. Old traits will disappear. Eventually, reproductive isolation occurs. And that's the definition of a new species. Now, here's the part that challenges intuition. We cannot accurately imagine what that future species will be like not because it won't exist, but because imagination itself is constrained by biology. Lucy could not imagine language. She could not imagine mathematics, music, or science. Not because she lacked intelligence, but because her neural architecture could not represent those ideas. In the same way, our brains evolved to solve current survival problems, not future ones. We imagine future humans as smarter versions of ourselves, but evolution doesn't work that way. It doesn't upgrade software. It changes the hardware. Future humans, or whatever comes after, may process information differently, experience time non-linearly, communicate without language, not identify as individuals at all. And they may look back at us the way we look at Lucy as an early stage. Lucy didn't know she was part of a larger story. We do. But even with all our science, we still don't know where the story leads. Evolution has no end credits. It is an open process, one that has already transformed life for nearly four billion years. Lucy was one data point in that process. We are another, and the universe is still running the experiment.